What's up, guy and girl players of World of Warcraft? This is Rutaro, aka Taro, bringing you this week's WoW Report, episode 10, Sunday, June 27th. For more free WoW guides, check out my website at tarowowguides.com. In this weekly WoW Report, I'll be highlighting some patch 3.3.5 changes, PvE, PvP, Holiday, Cataclysm, and Blizzard news, as well as a Q&A session. Patch 3.3.5 was released on Tuesday for North America and included the new Real ID Battle.net system which allows you to add real friends to communicate with even if they're on a different server or playing a different Blizzard game. So far the new chat has been welcomed by most, but not all. Some are worried about the security implications, but in all honesty, you can opt out of the system completely until it's changed the way you like it. In PvE news, Ice Crown Citadel's buff has been increased by 5% to 25%. The buff should help a lot of guilds still gearing up and well put together pugs in regular content and give that bit of extra help to down Syndragosa and the Lich King. Ruby Sanctum should also be releasing this week, adding what should be the final raid instance of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. The raid is set up similar to Obsidian Sanctum, with the main boss, Halion, and three mini-bosses. Loot ranges from eye level 258 out of 10 man normal to eye level 284 from 25 man heroic. You can check out all the loot on MMO Champion. Moving along to PvP news, nothing major in game, but the 2010 arena tournament has come to an end and the qualifying teams will face off in the regional finals. Good luck to all the teams! In holiday news, the midsummer festival is going on and it's never been easier to fight the holiday boss. Blizzard added in a selection to defeat Lord Ahun inside the random dungeon panel. The rewards are pretty decent with a chest containing an eye level 232 cloak while the satchet of chilled goods you get once a day contains two emblem of frost and could contain a staff or ice chip the pet. Moving on to other WoW news, Blizzard will start throttling requests for gear inspection from add-ons like Gearscore to alleviate some of the server lag caused by the queries. The add-on authors have been given a heads up and are likely working on some fixes, but in the meantime, don't be surprised if gear score starts acting weird or is flat out broken. Checking out Cataclysm news, some new screenshots for the week were released of some of the new Cataclysm instances and redesigned zones, which are looking pretty sick. Although this Twilight Highlands screenshot surprised me since I can't seem to get past the fact it looks like it's right out of Lord of the Rings. But who knows, it could just look similar. Besides changing the looks and quest of zones, Cataclysm will bring changes to all parts of the game at an attempt to make World of Warcraft the best it's ever been. A few talked about this week were actually making epic items feel like epics and something a player can be proud of. And my recent favorite, giving healers the ability to DPS when need be, or when they're bored. I've always heard healers complain about leveling as a healer or doing dailies as one, and while most thought it was solved with dual spec, that just wasn't the case. I've always played my druid as both. If the instance or raid was cake, I'd DPS between rolling dots. My DPS of course was horrible, but it was better than doing nothing and being bored. Low level quests have also seen some changes as all items have been re-itemized and the design team has also spent a great amount of time making sure every class, including ones that traditionally struggled, could be leveled easily. More and more changes are sure to come while they finish polishing up the Cataclysm expansion. In other Blizzard news, Blizzard's 2010 Global Writing Contest has begun and if you're up to the challenge, you can try your skills at writing a 2500 to 7500 short story for your chance to win a trip to the Blizzard headquarters where you can meet and eat with the Blizzard writing staff. Good luck to all who enter! Finally, I'd like to end this Taro Weekly WoW Report answering a few questions you guys and girls have asked me over the last week. Can I help you with your website or videos? I get this question a lot and the best way you can help is by telling your friends about my website. Although if you have graphic designing or high level programming skills, I do need help with some things that are way over my head. What's your Facebook and Twitter links? Well, here they are. Feel free to follow me on either or both. Why has your mage killed Sindragosa and not your druid? Ever since my guild disbanded 2-3 to three months ago, I haven't been playing my druid and instead I've been focusing on my ults. My mage is on a server with my friends so it's a lot more fun than playing with random pugs. The Lich King is also not going anywhere so I have plenty of time to down him on all my characters. 
So that's it for this week of Tara's Weekly WoW Report, and I hope you liked it. For this week's special gold making tip to bank off of, check my blog at tarawowguides.com slash blog. Stay on top of the news, economy, and updates of WoW with Tara's Weekly WoW Report released every Sunday. Please subscribe today and visit tarawowguides.com for more free WoW guides. Thanks for watching, and see you next Sunday. Now go! Tell me what you think of anything featured in this week's Tara's Weekly WoW Report in the comments section below. Personally, I can't wait for Ruby Sanctum to release to get a chance at those hot trinkets.